about a year ago this trend of virtual ram started going around i mean i think it was realme who launched it first in one of the budget devices and since then it has just been carried forward by every oem out there now some call it virtual ram like or what realme calls is this dynamic ram expansion and then there are others like who call it extended ram and they just bizarre names out for the same feature offering you extended virtual ram on your device but is that actual ram how does it work and most importantly does that really matter to you do you really need it this is one from gtr and in today's episode of deep dive we'll be taking a closer look at how the virtual ram works and more importantly is it important for you or not so without wasting any time let's just jump right into it Okay, so first things first, what exactly is this virtual RAM? Now, I've already done a very dedicated, thorough video talking about virtual RAM. Basically, first highlighting how Android uses memory management, then what virtual RAM is, and basically how it differs from ZRAM and everything else. And you can watch that video here from the link above. But just to summarize it and give you a gist of it, virtual RAM is basically a technique that is used by a lot of Linux distros, which basically makes use of a swap partition. And so instead of using paging as a technique for memory management, what Linux does is that it creates a swap partition that's located on your storage. Now, the way that swapping and paging differ is that, well, as the name suggests, paging works for pages or basically your apps that are actively open. While the whole concept of swapping is that it shifts data from your RAM to your storage and vice versa to basically give you an illusion that you have more RAM and technically those apps are being hibernated and stored on your storage for a temporary period of time. So ideally how this works is that all of the apps, as you might have already learned in your basic high school, all the apps inside a any sort of computer run on the RAM. Now, when we use swap or virtual RAM, what happens is when the RAM starts to fill up, the system recognizes apps that are not actively being used and then it shifts them from the RAM to the swap partition to basically clear up some space inside your actual RAM that can be utilized by, well, the active apps. Okay, so now you have a fair idea of how this virtual RAM works. But what's more important is to understand what kind of apps can actually use it and actually make proper use of it. And what are the other apps that don't really care about this kind of a feature on your system? For instance, imagine that you're playing a game and I have some songs running in the background on Spotify. Now, both of these apps will stay on your RAM only. You see, these can't be shifted to your virtual RAM since they're actively being used. On the other hand, Suppose you used a calculator app, then opened a specific post inside Reddit, then opened a specific tweet inside Twitter. Now these apps are something that can be shifted to your virtual RAM simply by freezing or hibernating them in the current state and then freeing up space on your actual RAM. When you go back and launch these apps, they will be transferred from the virtual RAM back to the actual RAM and finally refresh if needed. So essentially, it all depends on how you define multitasking. Now, of course, brands will tell you that virtual RAM helps in multitasking. And I mean, they're not entirely wrong. It just depends on how you define multitasking. If you're someone who multitasks or basically juggles between two, three active apps, in that kind of a scenario, virtual RAM can come in handy because it will then push all of the inactive apps from your RAM to your virtual RAM or ZRAM and then have more space available for in the actual RAM. However, if you're someone who uses multiple like six, seven different apps at the same time, just keep switching between them. In that kind of scenario, virtual RAM doesn't really make a difference. And that's where the problem is. Because what will happen is that virtual RAM will try and move inactive apps here and there all the time. And to be honest, there won't be enough inactive apps on your system anyway, if you're putting so many active apps inside the RAM. In that kind of scenario, virtual RAM doesn't really do much. Well, it does do something which is the negative part of virtual RAM. So if this feature has been so good, if not so good, but decent enough, why hasn't this been implemented before? And more importantly, why hasn't Google implemented this into Android itself? Why do manufacturers have to do that? Well, as it turns out, Google knows their shit. On their developer page, they clearly mention, 
On Android, storage isn't used for swap space like it is on other Linux implementations since frequent writing can cause wear on this memory and shorten the life of storage medium. And that's the thing. Now I understand that Androids have been here since the days of eMMC storage, but even with UFS storage, it's still flash memory. See, essentially swap partitions are basically storing hibernated apps and there's a lot of reading and writing involved here, which causes a lot of wear and tear on the overall life of your flash memory. And by flash memory, obviously, I mean the SSDs inside your PCs or the UFS or ROM storage inside your phones. So using swap or virtual RAM, you're technically lowering your device storage's lifespan. Don't believe me? Check out the news around the Apple MacBook laptops and with users complaining with the swap partition and how it has been slowing down their SSDs. That is the way it's designed to work. And while that's fine for a full-fledged desktop grade SSD to some extent, that thing is going to deteriorate the life of your flash memory, basically UFS storage inside your phone to a lot of extent. So basically this feature does more harm than good. So why implement it? Well, you need to understand that brands work as per the market needs and market needs are defined by the market interests and market interests are designed by stupid people who are just looking at products and judging them solely on the basis of numbers. A higher megapixel count must be a better camera. I mean, that is the kind of thinking most people have, which is why you now see 64 MP sensors and 108 MP sensors being brought out, which still are inferior to 12 MP sensors that are being used on flagship devices like the iPhones. So clearly there's a massive disconnect between what stuff actually matters and what people perceive should matter. And that's the same thing for RAM. I mean, people believe that higher RAM means the phone would be a better performer. And you can see this trend in the last two, three years, almost every phone, every flagship device that has been launched has been launched with a higher capacity RAM. You've seen 10 GBs RAM, 12 GB, even 16 GB of RAM. Seriously, 16 GB of RAM on an Android device? Are you stupid? Nobody needs that. But people feel that, okay, having 16 GB of RAM is going to make the phone so much faster, so much better. I mean, that is what sells in the market. Now, obviously you cannot offer 12 GB of DDR4 RAM on a budget device, right? So how do you achieve that number? Well, enter virtual RAM. That is exactly the concept here. You put 6 GB of normal RAM or max to max 8 GB of normal RAM and then put 4 GB, 5 GB, 7 GB, even 8 GB of virtual RAM and say, okay, it has a nice feature. Now, just to be clear, I am not saying that virtual RAM is a brand's way of fooling the consumer. I mean, there are some benefits to it. For instance, we all have high performance modes on our devices, right? You go to the battery section, you, there's a high performance mode. Xiaomi has it, Realme has it, or pretty much every phone has that. But when you turn that on, there are a couple of warnings that are displayed. One, the phone will consume more battery. Two, your phone will heat up more. Three, this can affect your overall device's health. These three warnings are showed up when you enable the high performance mode on any Android device out there. Why can't the same thing be done when you're offering virtual RAM to your consumers? At least educate them that if you're going to be using virtual RAM, in the long run, it's going to deteriorate the overall health of your storage. Just have a disclaimer for that. That is all I'm asking. It's important to educate the consumers and if brands are not going to do it, well, at least I am here to do it. With that being said, once again, I'm not going to deny the small benefits that it has, but still I would say that if you're someone who's buying a device and is planning to use that device for two years or more than that, well, I would just suggest keep the virtual RAM feature off. You don't really need it. It's not a significant advantage. And well, that was it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content. Till then, this is one from GTR and I'll see you in the next one.